Hi there, welcome along to another video. So we're going to go back to the book Weather Modification, Programs, Problems, Policy and Potential from the Congressional Research Service in the late 1970s. So we're going to go to chapter 5, page 302 and go straight in with the Department of Defence. Introduction the weather modification research, development and operations carried on by the Department of Defence are intended primarily to protect men and materials from environmental hazards and to be aware of current and developing weather modification technologies in order to avoid technological surprise by potential adversaries. So before we get too into that, it's important to note in the opening sentence, the US Air Force conducts the only operational weather modification activities in the Department of Defense. Then if we skip over to Army research and development, research and development efforts in weather modification are con conducted by all three services in the Department of Defense to some extent. So opening sentence for the Air Force, so yeah, it's only the Air Force doing it. Opening sentence for the Army, it's all three. Army, Air Force and Navy. If we skip over to the Navy bit, the research weather modification effort, effort of the Navy is now concerned with evaluation of weather modification experimental data and of state-of-the-art techniques. They're not really too sure, are they? What's going on? So anyway, the US Air Force conducts the only operational weather modification activities in the Department of Defense and the only regular identifiable federally sponsored operational program. This Air Force program provides a capability to dissipate cold fogs at two Air Force bases, Fairchild Air Force Base, Washington, and Elmendorf Air Force Base, Alaska, permitting use of these airfields and improvement of flight safety during cold fog conditions. At these installations, a ground-based dispersion system is used for spraying liquid propane into the atmosphere upwind of the target area to be cleared. Vaporization of the propane induces local cooling with attendant formation and growth of ice crystals at the expense of water droplets dissipating the fog. A capability is also maintained by the Air Force for dispersal of crushed dry ice from WC-130 weather reconnaissance aircraft if the need should arise for dissipation of cold fog at locations not equipped with ground-based systems. The dry ice particles falling through the fog sublimate causing a large temperature decrease in their vicinity so that the resulting ice particles which form and grow at the expense of supercooled fog droplets will fall out as snow. This capability has not been used since fiscal year 1976 and though dry ice crushes are currently stored at Keesler Air Force Base, Missouri, the Air Force plans continued use of these techniques, however, to reduce adverse weather effects due to fog on airfield operations and flight safety. Army Research and Development Research and development efforts in weather modification are conducted by all three services in the Department of Defense to some extent. Although the Army has terminated its technical base program, one equipment item, a mobile cold, cold fog dissipator, is in the engineering development phase. This gear, intended to provide a capability for dissipating supercooled fog at Army airfields, helipads and artillery sites, employs the propane dispenser technology to remove fog in local areas. The system is to be field tested in Alaska during 1978. Army research on warm fogs, now terminated, had been directed towards dispersal through a variety of possible techniques including helicopter downwash, use of hygroscopic materials and application of heat. So just to quickly touch on that application of heat, if you want to heat the sky, sometimes known as the ionosphere, if you want to heat the ionosphere, you would need an ionospheric heater, wouldn't you? Oh, I can't think of what they're called. I always forget, even though we seem to touch on that subject in every video, um, what they're called, Alaska. Oh, I just can't get it. So anyway, cook the sky. Um, 
Navy Research and Development. The research weather modification effort of the Navy is now concerned with evaluation of weather modification experimental data and of state-of-the-art techniques in order to avoid technological surprise. Instruments and methods have been developed. Instruments and methods have been developed to study fog, clouds and natural weather processes, utilizing measurements of dew point, liquid water distribution, cloud and fog droplets and ice particle sizes and number of cloud condensation nuclei. Recent investigations have been directed towards generation, characterization and evaluation of active agents to inhibit or enhance the formulation, growth, coalescence, removal and frequency of cloud and fog water droplets and towards understanding the mechanisms and theories applicable to these processes. Numerical modelling of the fog or cloud system has been used to design experiments and to define and evaluate the physical processes which occur in field experiments. The principal ongoing Navy research programme in weather modification has been statistical analysis to evaluate data from the Santa Barbara cold cloud modification experiments. While not a large effort, it is an important attempt to examine alternatives for reducing uncertainty in evaluating weather modification experiments. No further field experiments are currently planned for the Navy. In the recent past, the Navy has also sponsored major projects related to warm fog modification. Field experiments were conducted by the Naval Weapons Center, China Lake, California. Computer simulation studies have been underway at the Navy Environmental Prediction Research Facility in Monterey, California. The Naval Research Laboratory, Washington, D.C., has been developing instrumentation and conducting studies related to cloud particle and cloud nuclei properties. A standard evaluation site near Macon, Georgia, was under development and the Office of Naval Research has provided support for a variety of investigations. Air Force Research and Development Air Force research projects in weather modification are currently directed toward dispersal of warm fog and stratiform clouds. Development of a prototype warm fog dispersal system planned for eventual installation at an Air Force base is underway. The system development tests will be conducted at Otis Air Force Base, Massachusetts, and the field program will be supplemented with modeling studies in order to develop relationships between wind speed and the heat and the thrust requirements of the dispersal system. The system includes a number of combustors positioned along a runway and its approaches. The burn rate of the combustors is to be controlled precisely by a computer which monitors meteorological instruments in the runway area. Such a system, using both heat and thrust, is termed a thermokinetic system. The expected warming of the air over runway and approaches by 2 degrees to 3 degrees centigrade above ambient temperature should result in lowering the relative humidity and evaporation of the fog droplets. Figure 16 shows the expected clear evaporation of the fog droplets. It's a little picture you can see on the page. The little airplane there coming into land and the area that's being cleared is the sort of funnel shaped area. Upon successful completion of the field tests in 1979, it is expected that an operational warm fog dispersal system will be designed and installed as an Air Force base by 1982. The bulk of the Air Force research funding shown in Table 17 covers development and testing of this system at Otis Air Force Base. Another Air Force project is directed towards development of an operational technique for dispersal of supercooled stratus clouds. Field experiments and numerical modelling will be used to estimate quantities and types of seeding materials suitable for dispersal under a wide range of meteorological conditions. Under the auspices of the Air Force Geophysics Laboratory, field tests on supercooled stratus dispersal were conducted during February 1977 in Michigan using a dispensing system which deployed silver iodide. The objective of these tests were, was to produce clearing over a predetermined ground target. 
in all cases, except when the minimum cloud temperature was greater than minus 6 degrees centigrade, clearings were affected. The test demonstrated that such clearings can be produced with a small lightweight delivery system adaptable for use on tactical aircraft and that targeting is not a serious problem. At a steep elevation angle ground targets were clearly visible after clearing but they were obscured by residual glaciated clouds in the clearings when the look angle was more, more shallow. It is considered possible that some of the residue might have been due to overseeding. In another planned series of tests, attempts will be made to optimise the seeding rate to improve visibilities in the cleared area. Other seeding materials, such as formaldehyde and propane, which are active in the 0 degrees centigrade to minus 6 degrees centigrade temperature range, will also be tested since silver iodide is not active above minus 6 degrees centigrade. A theoretical study is also planned to determine the effects various forms of radiant energy could have on dispersal of warm stratus clouds. So, very interesting to read there um, about formaldehyde being used instead of silver iodide. Formaldehyde, as you know, is um, a bit of a preservative, I believe, isn't it? <laughs> The other one mentioned there uh, was propane. So um, with propane weather modification, there was an article about 10 years ago where scientists were showing that uh, by spraying propane out of uh, an aircraft, they were able to create snow at temperatures of 10 degrees centigrade. So water freezes at zero degrees centigrade snow. You get that around minus one, zero, one degrees. It's around that once you've hit that frozen, frozen degree, if you like. So when you spray out propane, you're able to create, when it's 10 degrees on the ground, if you like, um, yeah, you're able to produce snow. Propane is a molecule that has, um, like all molecules, they have a very distinct shape, um, which is how humans are able to tell them apart from each other. So propane, if you spray it out, it's no different than silver iodide. These are not kind of random elements with random elemental shapes. Elements have a specific crystalline structure, if you like. Um, so when you get round snow or triangular shaped snow, pyramidal sn shaped snow, and especially a lot of people have seen the round snow, you know, that's because the nucleus is round. It's, um, you know that from snowflakes. Snowflakes are all unique because their nucleus is all unique. A grain of sand are all unique. Well, if a grave, you know, if you see the nucleus of anything, hail, a water droplet, anything, it needs a solid nucleus, such as a grain of sand, and then the water attaches to that. So, hence, when you spray propane, and you wonder why you've got snow and it's 10 degrees centigrade, and it's all round snow, you kind of understand why you've got snow. <laughs> so, we'll leave that there. We'll go for another chapter soon, shall we? Thanks for watching, thanks for listening. You can always feel free to leave a comment. They sometimes go into the marked as spam or likely to be spam. Um, whenever I go into my account, generally I have a look and check. And I do allow all comments. So feel free, you don't have to agree with what I say. And you can say what you want to say, how you want to say it. So be free, speak freely. And um, yeah, I promise you, even if your comment doesn't show up, it's because it's gone to the spam bin and I have to approve it, which I will do. Take care now.